seems to me While I ride up in my saddle I hear this haunting melody Oh, ride me easy, cowboy And treat me right The road is long and lonely And I'm your home tonight Let me sing my song of the saddle My saddle's haunting melody Oh, I'll sing you the song of the saddle The way my saddle sings the song to me Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Clunchy's plays no favorites. It's a Democrat of breakfast food. Why it makes the kiddies grow so fast, we believe it, folks. They eat it before breakfast, at sundown they need a shave. <laughs> <laughs> Say, where is this guy, Austin? Here it is, 10 seconds ago, and he's out kissing cow. So, ladies and gentlemen, Carter's Crunchies are good for you. They are tempting, nourishing, the TNT of breakfast food. Uh-uh, yes, sir. And they now present to you, from a coast-to-coast -coast shortwave broadcast, the one and only Gene Austin. Texas. I'm a howling coyote, you howling you. When I get good and plastered on carbolic acid, I can tear a rattlesnake in two. They seem to go for everything I do. I whip them and I beat them, that's the way you've got to treat them. You want to make a lady fall for you. Now when I'm on the prod and start prowling, the sheriffs put their badges on the shelf. And though they all detest me, they never do arrest me Till I get mad and arrest myself, myself Now when I eat, I pick my teeth with cactus And smoke a stick of dynamite or two I love to be a buddy, cause I'm wild and woody You ain't telling me, I'm telling you, ole ole to my boy when you're up and stabbing. He isn't your boy, Lee. Oh, you old fossil. When he gets sick, I'll put it away then. I want to thank you, folks. You know, I'm kind of excited. Because I'm getting close to home. I was born and raised right down here around Sage Junction. I'm going to let you in on a little something. You know, I don't remember my real parents, but there's a fella down there named Charlie Turner. Pop, I always call him, because he raised me. He gave me the money to go east and make good with my singing on the radio. Now I want to sing a little song for Pop. The best friend a boy ever had and the only daddy I've ever known. I want to sing his little favorite song. I hope you're listening, Pop, because I'm coming home. <laughs> Don't you weep anymore for me tonight I'm coming home, I'm coming home Don't you wait up tonight by the candlelight I'm Now what's going on with that honorary old head of yours now? I'm coming home I was just thinking, Jed Wouldn't it be wonderful if Tara could be here when he arrives? I'm all My granddaughter and Jean. What a match so that would be. Charlie, as much as I hate to agree with you, I must admit it would be... I 
want to talk to you. Why, Rocky, you know I never turn off Gene's program. I'm here on business. Mm, that's a pretty nasty way to talk to a man you're working for. Working for? <laughs> you haven't paid me any wages in six months. Well, Rocky, you know things ain't been so good lately. I know all about you losing cattle. I'm not here to ask you for money. I'm here to give you some. What's that? Oh, don't look so funny. I met up with the boys and had a little game of cards and won three thousand dollars. Ah, oh, no. There ain't that much money outside of the New Deal. No? Well, here it is in cash. All you've got to do is sign over the deed to the ranch to me, and it's yours, Pop. Including the back wages. Go on and take it, Pop, before the young man wakes up. You mean you want to buy my ranch? That's what I said, and I'm offering you more than it's worth. Appears to me, Rocky, that uh, the fellas always saying that this property is good for nothing. And now you want to buy it. Why? Go on and get the deed, Pop. Me being your lawyer, I'll make the transaction legal. I want you to know, Rocky, that I appreciate your offer. But you see, the ranch is all I've got. And I don't think I could part with it. Then you refuse? Yep, I'm afraid I do. Look here, Turner. You can't fool around with me. Either you sell me the place, or pay me. I'm tired of waiting. But Rocky, I can't give you what I haven't got. My offer stands good until tomorrow. After that, I want my back salary, or I'll take it up in court. I'll never make up my mind to the sale, Rocky. But I'll do the best I can about your wages. Why, you razor backed old hog. Have you completely lost what few brains you have in that shallow head of yours? Hey, you'll never get another offer like that. Hmm, I think that fellow must have been smoking local weed or something. I don't think so. It's all right, Rocky. Speak up. It's Mr. Falcon. He's going to build the road for us. How are you? How do you do? Well, boss, this is one time you guessed wrong. Old Pop Turner wouldn't sell that ranch. She'd rather lose it right on. Did you show him the money? Yeah. And it didn't even bat an eyelash. I told you we'd run across one of those ranchers who wouldn't sell. We'd better try and buy the right away from him direct. I don't give up so easily. Selling the right away is only going to be part of the profit in this deal. Once that highway's built across those properties, every acre of that land's gonna be worth plenty of money. Why, the whole town will move in that direction. And when it does, people are going to buy land. And when they buy, it will be from George Morrow and no one else. Understand? But Morrow, don't you realize that that road is a relief measure to put unemployed men to work? We can't keep it a secret much longer. We've managed to do it so far. I'm not going to play around with Pop Turner. He's going to sell or else. Well, I won't be a party to any law breaking. You forget, Falcon, that I could ruin you with very little trouble. You weren't always a contractor, you know. So what? I served my time, and I've been going straight. Sure. 
But folks around here are just a little bit suspicious about ex-convicts, especially when the charge against them was forgery. All right. I'll string along. But you've got to make it fast. Leave that to me. I'll see you at the hotel. Oh, by the way, did Pop say anything about the wages he owed you? Oh, he said he'd try and dig up the money somewhere or the other. You know, Rocky, I just found out that Pop never made out a will. Is that so? Yes. Let me see. Wasn't I present when he told you that he'd leave you the ranch in case anything happened to him before the debt was paid? Huh? Oh, uh, did he say that? Well, yes, I'm sure he did. A couple of the boys were there from my ranch at the time. Well, old boy, today's the day. We just get in town in time to see Gene driving with his big bus, making us both mighty proud of him. This is the place, all right. Old Pop Turner hasn't missed passing that spot for the last 20 years on his way to town. Too bad to have to bump off Pop on the day to welcome that radio cowboy into town. Did you ever meet the guy, Rocky? No. I came to work for Pop after Austin went east. Wish it was him we was after. You know, my girl can't talk about anything but his voice. You're lucky to have a girl that can talk. Mine can't do anything but giggle. Uh, keep your mind on your work. We got to make a clean job of this. If I'm any judge, Ma don't like any mistakes. You said it, Rocky. Here's Pop now. You never would get him. Well, the horse will get out all right. But Pop's as dead as a mackerel. Yeah, but you got him. Yeah. I got him. Poor old Pop. It sure was a bad accident. Yeah, too bad he had to fall like that.
promoting your manager, your publicity man, the official announcer of this outfit. I gotta be Skeet Boy, too. Yeah, and if I hit this one, you're gonna be dishwasher again today. Lucy, my charming little nightingale. It's too hot to be holding this rope all day. Jed Hill, it was your idea to hang this dang thing up. So if you want it up before Pop gets into town, I reckon you better talk less and pull harder. There you are, my beautiful little hummingbird. Hello, Jed. Hi, hey, Sheriff. Getting ready for the celebration? Yeah. I reckon a lot of folks will show up. It's a nice sign. Oh, just a little old something that I painted up while waiting for my coffee to boil. Hey, Sherry. Uh, sure. I was just thinking the same thing. No, not under the left. That's not good luck for anybody. Jed Hill, if you leave me up here alone, I'll never speak to you again. Uh, there, there, my little uh, uh, thingamabob. Sherry has a case for me. Very, very important. This is important, you lazy coyote. Coyote, she calls me. John, you, you think Barney might take that in equal exchange for a couple of good snorts? <laughs> I guess so. Good. Help! That's my hammer. Don't you dare sell it. That's right. Nail persuader and legal tender for refreshments for my good friend John and me. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that, Jed. Well, Barney, set him up for ever. Had a tough morning. Well, oh, thanks, Mr. Morrow. Well, boys, you're just in time. Have a drink? Yeah, and we need it. We just saw an awful accident. What? Accident? Yes, sir. Pop Turner's horse ran away with him and plunged over Hangman's Cliff. Oh, not Pop Turner. That couldn't be. I know Pop Turner when I see him. I met these fellows up in Union. We were heading in when Pop Turner went flying along the edge of the cliff, a tugging and a pulling at the reins. But it was no use. Man and beast went head over heels into the river. He's... he's dead? Yes. We... we tried to get to him, but we were too late. I'll send some men to drag the river. You might try it, Sheriff, but the current's awfully swift. Pop, there's only one way to handle this. We've got to let your would-be killers believe you're dead. You mean I have to stay in hiding? Yes, for two reasons. First, it'll protect you against another attack, and also give the killers a chance to show their hand. All right, Gene, whatever you say. But don't guard, I've been waiting an awful long time to see you ride back to St. Junction. I know how you feel, Pop. This is serious. You better get inside now, we're nearing town. Will you hurry up, Jack? 
Doggone it, before you through tight my will, I'll be dead of old age. Now, you're already dead from the neck up. Huh? Huh? I'm telling you, Jean, you're not going to get away with it. It's against the law to probate a will when the deceased is still alive. We're only breaking the law in the interest of justice. Huh? <laughs> Pray that won't hold water in court. Oh, shut up. The only water you know anything about to chase it. Say, this leaves half the ranch to Carol and half to me. That's the way I want it. In case anything goes wrong, I want that paper to be legal. That's right, Jean. Papa's always said that he had two heirs, his granddaughter and you. What's Carol going to say about this? Why, she'll be tickled pink. Besides, in case Mara's behind this affair, he's not going to be afraid of a girl, but he'll think twice before he tackles you. Well, it's about time someone exposed that crook. Hey, let me have that. I just thought of something. That will ain't legal. We got to have witnesses. A witness? Sure. Some disinterested party who can swear, if necessary, that Pop here was in his right mind when he drew it up. Quick, Pop, in the trunk. All right, who's there? It's me, Lucy. Open her up, Jed. Now, what do you want? I just want to tell you that Doc Williams will sign the death certificate. The sheriff's men have given up dragging the river. Pop's body's gone. Hey! Couldn't Lucy be the witness? Pop! <laughs> now, see what you've done, you old blunderbuss? <laughs> She'll be all right. Bring her on and tell her everything. I'll go get the boys. Have them come in and take that trunk out with you in it. All right, Pop, let's get her out of it. Let us see that you're alive. Come on. <sighs> Come on now, come yeah, on. We come on, little bluebird, little yeah. bluebird, you're all right. <laughs> oh, let me out of here! I gotta get out of here! you got a little tough with Pop about the wages he owed you. Now, Gene, I didn't say Rocky was tough. I said he said he was going to court if he didn't get his pay. That's all. And why not? The money was coming to me, wasn't it? I don't know whether it was or not, seeing Pop's most of his stock while you worked for him. Meaning what? Meaning anything you want to make it. Are you accusing me? When you reach for that sonny boy, make sure you're going to use it. Just a minute now, man. We don't want to have any trouble here. I'm afraid you're a little upset. It's mighty funny to me, Rocky quarreled with Pop just the day before he was killed. Now, now, Austin, you're all wrong. Rocky wasn't the only witness to Pop's accident. And from what he tells me, he offered to buy the ranch at a pretty good figure. Why does Rocky tell you all his personal business? Being a banker, he came to me for advice. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I am a little jumpy. But you see, I'd much rather have Pop here alive than to have the ranch. Did he leave you the place? Yep. To Gene and his granddaughter, Carol. I drew up the will. That's right. Carol will be here tomorrow, and we're going to probate the will. But first, I'd like to square up a few of Pop's debts. How much did he owe you, Rocky? Why, uh, six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars, huh? Here you are. Thanks. Sorry I lost my temper. Do you mind riding out to the ranch with me tomorrow? I'd like to look at the books and have you show me around. Oh, I know. I'll be glad to do anything I can. Thanks. No hard feelings? Of course not. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, hey. How about our drinks? Jed, you go right ahead. I never use it. Good night, gentlemen. 
gentlemen, pleasant dreams. Hey. Pardon me. My mistake. Boy, oh boy, you sure got him thinking faster than that now. I hope the next move. I don't know this fellow Mar is pretty smart, but you're certain to throw a lot of sand in that gravy. Say, who was the fellow next to Mar? The one that listened so much and so interested and said nothing? His, his name is Falcon. Falcon's your name. He, he hasn't been around here very long. They say he's some kind of engineer. Engineer, huh? What are they planning to build? Build? Hmm, nothing that I know of. Well, Jed, peeping through the window and saw you right up. Well, here's a little lady ready to go. Carol, I suppose I should introduce you too, but, well, don't seem at all necessary somehow. It isn't. I've seen Mr. Austin's picture, I've read his name in grandfather's letters, and I've heard him on the radio. Yes, it seems I've heard about you somewhere. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry I wasn't out to the train to meet you, but I've been very busy. Uh, he sure has been busy. You know, he hasn't stopped since he's been here. He seems to have done all right as far as his ambitions go, even when he wasn't here. I don't follow you, Miss Carroll. Just what do you mean by that? Just this, Mr. Austin. You might have convinced my grandfather that you were entitled to half of his property. But if you think that automatically makes you my guardian and protector, you're sadly mistaken. Hey, Carol, what in the world's the matter with you? Nothing at all, Jed. But Grandpa Turner has been trying to sell me on this young man for ages. Though I appreciate his interest, I like to select my own companions. Oh, I see how you feel. I'm glad to get your opinion of me right from the start. Shall we go? Certainly. This is Rocky Renault. How do you do? why you insist on passing the spot of Grandpa Turner's accident. Mr. Renault says there's another way. Did Rocky say that? My, that's interesting. Well, it isn't very pleasant for me. Sorry? You know something? That guy also smelled a rat. Eh, uh, he won't find nothing up there. Well, just the same, I ain't gonna ask too many questions. There's dynamite behind that grin of his. Yeah, I've been... It just doesn't check. I've seen a lot of runaways in my time. A runaway horse will usually pick a safe route, even if he's excited. You're right about that. But Pop was pulling hard in the reins. He caused the horse to fall. 
I suppose those are your boot prints down there, you and the other fellows that were with you. Uh, yes, uh, we dismounted and looked over. Do we have to reenact the whole thing? Isn't it enough that it's happened? We can ride on if you like, Miss Carroll. Go ahead, don't mind me. Say, that's a nice rifle you got there, Rocky. Yeah, I like it. Maybe I could uh, do a little shooting with it sometime when we get out to the ranch, huh? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, a anytime. Come on, Rocky. See, did you hear her call him Rocky? Yes. I guess you're in a prairie doghouse now. I guess so. <laughs> Let's go, boy. Something? Yes, I can't find the keys to this bedroom. Why, well, there are no keys to the bedroom. Pop lost them years ago. Well, then who else is going to sleep under this roof? Let's see now. Uh, you're over here, and I'm over there. There's really no room for anyone else. Do you mean you and I are going to stay here alone with the doors unlocked? Well, that's the general idea. Well, I won't do it. I refuse. Look here, Gene Austin, this is no kidding matter. What are we going to do about it? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I walk in my sleep, too. You what? Oh, it's nothing to worry about. You see, there's a peculiar thing about my affliction. If we draw a line across the room and I get it firmly fixed in my mind, I never cross it. It's not a bad idea. As long as we're going to own this place 50-50, we might as well divide it up right now. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get over here and we'll build a fence. Right through the living room, right through the kitchen. Listen, you, I'm not kidding. Oh, I don't mean a real fence, just an imaginary line like this. You see, if you cross to my side, you're trespassing. And the same applies to me. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to have a little supper tonight, you better make a deal with me. Why? Well, take a look in the kitchen. All the groceries are on my side of the fence. So long. There he goes now, heading for the bunkhouse. And he thinks I didn't see him pick up that empty shell. Ah, uh, what if he did? He can't kill nobody with it. No, but if he can match the markings with one from the same gun, we can all hang for murder. Well, let's get rid of the gun. Oh, no. That would be the same as a confession. What we're going to do is get that shell back again. Say, will you please take it easy, fellas? Why, that's the only way to cure saddle fever, Mark. Oh, then... Oh, look out! Oh, look out, boys! All right, you guys, break it up. Where's Rocky? Oh, he went out. I thought I told you to watch him. Can I help if he took a powder when our shirts were off? Listen, you guys. Hasn't it ever dawned on you that Rocky's the guy who took a shot at Pop and I'm trying to pin it on him? Yeah? No kidding? Come here. I want you to do something for me. Porky, I want... That's just your imagination. No, I swear to... <laughs> Why, that's nothing but an old coyote. He wouldn't bite you. Well, I tell you, they're trying to dig in. Please, may I stay here with you? I can't... There, there, now. What'll make you feel a little easier? I know I'll play a little music. Sing a song, scare the old coyote away. Oh. 
why can't I be your sweetheart tonight? Why can't I hold you in my arms tonight? In the morning, with a dawning, it won't seem right. But why can't I be your sweetheart tonight? A million years ago, we loved each other so. Remember how we laughed at fate a million years ago. So why? Why can't I hold you in my arms tonight? In the morning, with a dawning, you'll be gone from my sight. But why can't I? I think. Why, you... And therefore I, Charles L. Turner, being to the best of my knowledge of sound mind and body, herewith bequeath all my worldly goods and chattels to be divided equally by and between my only living relative, Carol Turner and Jean Austin. The aforesaid individuals upon my death are to take possession of my property to share and share alike all the assets thereof after my just debts have been paid. Signed, Charles L. Turner. Will has been properly witnessed and notarized. Are there any creditors? Your Honor, I paid all the outstanding debts. I beg your pardon, Mr. Austin, but here's one you didn't pay. Your Honor, the bank holds an unpaid note of Turner's, the principal of which amounts to $5,000. $5,000? That's a lie. Pop Turner never borrowed that much money in his life. You're very much mistaken, Mr. Hill. Turner borrowed that money less than two months ago. No such thing. I've been, I mean, I was his lawyer for 30 years. He told me everything. The signatures on the note and on the will appear to be identical. They match, all right. I don't care. It's a deliberate forgery. Your Honor. Mr. Hill, you'll have to prove that charge. I can prove it, and I will prove it. I'll get the best detectives. I'll get handwriting experts. I, oh, I want a drink. There'll be no drink served here till after court's adjourned. Now, Your Honor, the bank doesn't wish to be hard about this matter. Perhaps some of the heirs can discharge the obligation. I haven't that much money. I'd be glad to assume the debt if you'll accept my signature. Not without security, Mr. Austin. What security did Pop have? At the time Turner borrowed the money, the ranch was worth that amount. Why didn't you mention this note the other night when I paid Rocky Renault in your presence? I don't conduct the bank's business after hours. You mean you dug up this forgery after your other schemes failed? Your Honor, I refuse to stand here and be insulted. And I demand that the Turner property be turned over to the sheriff and sold to satisfy this debt. And I demand a complete investigation of Morrow and all his activities. I think he's a crook. Restrain yourself, Mr. Austin, or I'll cite you for contempt. If you can produce evidence of forgery, the court can take the proper action. In the meantime, you and Miss Turner must vacate the ranch and place the assets in the hands of the sheriff. That's all. Court's adjourned. Well, what do you say now, Morris? You're a pretty good penman. It won't be long before you'll be building the road and we'll be cashing in. He must have got my signature off a canceled check. 
Well, I was always careless about picking them up. Yeah. There's only one thing to do, and that's to trace the forgery. We'll have to prove it. Give me a gun. I'll make Mara talk. Here, sit down, will you? That was all in jail for probating a false will. And I'll go to jail before I let a gang of crooks steal everything I've got. Why, if I show them I ain't dead, they'll start running for holes like rats. No, Pop, show your face and one of Morrow's men will kill you before you open your mouth. It's not just your ranch we're fighting for now, it's every ranch in this part of the country. They're all in the hands of Morrow's men. I believe that Morrow got that property in direct violation of the law. Now, if we can prove it, we can challenge those sales and wipe out Morrow. Then we can see if those ranchers get everything that's coming to them. Lucy. Ah, that crazy girl will be seen coming here yet. Hi, Mr. Ghost. Is it hot down there where you're supposed to be? All right, Lucy, what did you find out? Well, you told me to hang around the telegraph office and try to read any wires that come from Mara or Falcon. Here's one to Mara I copied down. I had to promise old Perkins a kiss to get him to let me read over his shoulder. Hey, listen to this. Regarding highway construction, stop. Impossible comply with your request, stop. Information must appear in public print at once. It's signed Kelly. Highway construction? Gene, you were right. Lucy, you've done a fine job, but there's more to do. You mean I have to go back to that yes. telegraph office? Oh, Jean, if I have to kiss old Perkins, I'll be sick for a week. This means Morrow has used his influence to keep a public project a secret, a highway. All right, we'll see Judge Harrison about that. No, from the way this wire is worded, we can't prove a thing. But there is a way to prove it. How? by getting a hold of Morrow's private correspondence. Oh, I fell down and broke my heart in two. Now you've got me crying over you. I never was lonely. Came along. Now you've got me singing the blues all day long. I fell down and broke my heart in two. When I tripped and stumbled in moon, I was excited and you were delighted, just like a couple of school kids. Darling, won't you tell me what to do? Cause I fell down and broke my heart in two. Well, I'd like to spend the evening with you charming people, but we have a broadcast coming up, and the boys need a rehearsal. <clears throat> well, uh, couldn't you uh, bring them over here? I better not. I'm afraid we wouldn't get much work done. Well, I'll just clear off the table and I'll go to the door with you, Jean. Mighty fine little girl, but she cramps my style. She stays around here much longer, she's going to reform me. How? Too neat. You no, know, I just get so I can't leave a little nip anywhere. Listen. Boy, you've got to be mighty careful getting into Morrow's office. Say, listen, you realize, don't you, that you're robbing a bank? Here are the keys. Where'd you get the keys? I don't know. I just put my uh, hand in my pocket and there they were. <laughs>
Hawkins in the bank. What? In the bank? Boys? We'll take a walk. Clinker, get the sheriff. Get your men set, Rocky. Boys? Four of you go to the side of the bank. The rest come on the other side. before the sheriff gets here. Do you realize the penalty for bank robbing Austin? There's your man, Sheriff. Well, what have you got to say to yourself, Austin? Nothing. Nothing at all, Sheriff. I 
I whoop them out I beat them. That's the way you got to treat them. Listen. You want to make a That's little awesome. for you. It can't be. Sure. Now, you hear him singing on the street? What? Out. Yeah. The sheriffs put their badges on the show. And though they all detest me, they never do arrest me. Well, I get mad to arrest myself myself. Steve, come with me. Door, it's open. Thanks, Jed. All right, boy. So Austin thinks he can get away with this, huh? Stay with me, Steve. Come on out, Austin. You're cornered. Come in and get me, Sheriff. If you don't, I will. Come on. Hold it, Sheriff. Mr. Falcon's room, don't you? Yes. All right, walk over there to that desk. Now pick up that blotter. Hold it up the mirror. What do you see? Pop Turner's signature. Several of them. Yeah, and every one a forgery. And Falcon forged the Morrow note. Now, nah, Sheriff, you're beginning to catch on. But I could never make Judge Harrison believe that. But as a police officer, you'll make a fine witness. All right, Austin. Hold it. Austin's clear. Everything checks, even to his reason for breaking into the bank. Thanks, Sheriff. Might be a good idea to let the people on the street think you've captured me. Between us. Judge, there's some things you can do to avoid some very bad publicity. What do you mean? You refuse me bail. That's within the power of my office? Yes, well, there's a lot of people in this town want to know which side of the fence you're on. You might begin right now by signing this writ. Better right. sign it, Judge. Right. Sensible thing to do, Judge. Why, sure, right. I'd be glad to. Will this definitely put a stop to the highway going through? Yes, the whole matter will be thoroughly investigated as soon as Morrow and Falcon are in custody. Let's go, Sheriff. No, Gene. I've got to stay here and get Morrow and all his private records. Well, this writ has to be served by an officer. Hold up your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to uphold the laws of this county? I do. Gene's gone after Rocky. You're going to be killed. you so you'll be here when I get back. Hello, Detective. 
cut this road through. For a couple of months. Hey, Smitty! They knocked that turnip fence down. You mean the moral fence, don't you, Falcon? Right. right through this front yard. Yeah, the boss ain't still much land. Yeah, he wants to wait until the road's finished. It's worth more then. He expects to get plenty invested here. Hey, look who's driving this way. Why, it's Austin. There's a court order, Falcon. All construction work must stop pending investigation. Jay Birds can't serve Ritz, Austin. A special officer, Mara. You and Falcon are under arrest for forgery. What does this mean, boss? Means that all of these men are thrown out of a job. Yeah? Who says so? This guy's a crook, man. How he got away with this, I don't know. You trick to stop work on the road. Not a few men say this Rick was never served. I wouldn't let him get away with it. Throw him off the property. What do you think? Oh, you can't get away with this. Come on and grab him. Who said they can? I say he can't.
Yeah. All right, men. These men stole ranches from people who want nothing more than a square deal. We want roads, we want progress, and we want justice. And the courts will see that we get it. And we're going to see that you build the roads. You boys will be safer in town. I would unhesitatingly exclaim that uh, business must be pretty good. I hear this Are you selling many of those lots? Is he selling many lots? Right Is he selling many lots? Ah. <laughs> Tell him, Pop. All except one, yeah. That's the, uh, the one the house sets on. Hmm? I save him that one. And I'm your home. I still have hopes. Let me sing no. my song of yes. the saddle, my saddle's haunting melody. Oh, I'll sing you the song of the saddle, the way my saddle sings the song of me.